we, as Darren mentioned, we have clients uh, all over the country in all states, and we get to see things from our clients' perspective, and we get to gather data and information that you may not have access to. By the way, Darren, there are not 50 Delta organizations in the United States. There's, I believe, 38, because some of the states combine, like, for example, New Hampshire uh, and Vermont combine together to create one Delta organization. So collectively, there's about 38 Delta uh, organizations around the country. And there was a time not so long ago where they really were the 5,000 pound bully. And they could get away with doing just about anything uh, because most dentists had the perspective that there was no way that they could ever practice and not be a participating provider with Delta. And because of that, Delta took advantage. They, they, who was on the ropes then, Darren? The who dentist. was on the ropes back then? The dentist was the dentist. on the ropes. And today we're starting to see that shift and we're starting to see the deltas on the ropes. Like, let me, let me give you evidence of that. Um, not so long ago, Delta would, if you went out of network with Delta, they would not assign benefits to your practice. Many other insurance companies have historically, whether you're in network or out of network, would allow you to assign benefits to your office, meaning that they would send you the check. But Delta up until relatively recently would always send the check to the patient always send the check to the patient. And they did that as leverage. They, they felt like many dentists, knowing that the check would then go to the patient, would really um, think long and hard about whether they could go out of network if the check's going to go to the patient. But we're starting to see evidence that in some states, in some Delta organizations, they are now sending the check to the patient. I mean, to the doctor. Uh, excuse me, they're now, saying, they're now uh, uh, allowing you to accept assignment of benefits. They're, they're now sending the check to the provider when you're out of network. Now, let, let me send a disclaimer. That's not happening with all 38 Delta organizations, but we're starting to see it happen more and more. That would mean to me be a signal that um, in order for Delta to be competitive, they're having to change some of their internal policies. And I would hope that would be a, a good thing uh, in, in my mind. Uh, but we're now seeing in some cases, Delta is, is now allowing you to assign benefits when you go out of network. And if you think, why in the world would they do that, Naren? Um, and the answer is, is that ultimately, Delta does have a boss. <laughs> it's not you as a doctor. It's not you. It's not sure. you as a patient. However, who's the boss, Naren? It's the employer who writes that multi-million dollar check. You know what the golden rule is, Naren? Keep your boss happy. <laughs> no, the golden rule is whoever has the gold makes the rules. Oh, makes sense. So that's, <laughs> that's the golden, the golden rule. <laughs> whoever has the gold makes the rule. And, and ultimately, Delta does have a boss. And the boss is the employers that buy these policies. That's right. the boss. Right. Uh, now, you might say, well, what is it, don't, aren't they beholden to their board of directors? Eh, yes, that's, that's true as well. Um, but ultimately, they, in the marketplace, are beholden to the companies that write the checks. Right. And I imagine, you know, we don't have access to the inner workings of these Delta organizations. <laughs> they won't talk to us. But right. I imagine that in many cases, these states where they're now assigning benefits, the employers say, wait a minute, we, we write a big fat check to you. Tens of millions of dollars. And I can imagine in some cases, if it's a huge, huge company, it might even be a hundred million dollars. We're writing checks for benefits. And you're not holding up your end of the deal. You're not providing benefits to our employees. And if you don't start to improve the benefits that you're providing to, to our employees, then there are other fish in the pond. There's other uh, insurance companies that we can uh, uh, we can send our money to. And so I imagine that's the kind of discussion that's yeah, going so on internally. Let's say a doctor drops Delta and now those patients are upset because it's more hassle for them because they get the check and now they're paid, paid doctor. And let's say hundred of these people call the HR department. I'm sure Delta is going to hear about it, right? Because, yeah. you know, the HR people are saying, what's going on? I mean, why am I giving you all this money when my people are pissed off, you know, at my insurance, at the insurance right. coverage they have. Now, there's also some legislative movement that's changing, and that in some states, again, let me put the disclaimer, not all, but in some states, some Delta, where, where Delta organizations exist, they are now mandating that Delta allow the office to assign benefits, whether you're in network or out of network. So they're getting pressure administratively as well. 